Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, for your pleasure, I'm playing the T-10A, the new Soviet premium heavy tank of battle rating 7.7, .7, rank 5. You can get this tank by purchasing the battle pass and then also doing daily logins, lots of the challenges, and also a lot of daily tasks. So, a lot of activity, a lot of grinding, and then you can get it by also then purchasing the battle pass. And the question is, is this tank worth it is this to be your main goal or is it just a nice hangar decoration because it is so bad so what i am about to tell you is what i mean 100 percent honest and what i is absolutely my experience and if you wanted to see this vehicle being hyped wrong video wrong channel get the hell out of there because this tank is bad and it just shows what went wrong with War Thunder when it comes to tanks, especially in my opinion, but also objectively. Talking about objectivity, this is one of those points that I always try to bring forward with my tank reviews. And I always find one or two aspects about a tank that are, you know, at least decent or set it apart from the competition. With this tank, you have a bit of a problem how to sell people what is basically a 5.7 heavy tank because that is what it is and in many aspects battle rating for battle rating speaking it's actually worse than the is2 and to be honest it bears the name t10 you know that means something i mean the t10m once upon a time was one of the best tanks in war thunder and this tank is miles away from that performance and also the actual performance from the T10M. The problem is tanks like the T114, the M56 Scorpion and many other tanks. There are light tanks that are faster, more mobile and have just low pen tanks. And when the combination of this happens, where you don't one shot an enemy tank, and then you just get AP FSDS by yet another premium tank or tech tree tank that just happens to have a dart. That basically summarizes it. So I'm not here to sugarcoat anybody's ass here and I'm not telling you sweet little lies. I'm here to share my experience with you. I'm 100% honest and that not always gets the full like ratio, you know, but I've done this for years, so what is one more video about talking negative things? This is not my intention. I would love to like this tank because it's it's everything that I once loved. And in fact, playing this tank has ripped open old scars. And that's basically what I want to talk you through today. So I tried to cut out as much melodramatic crying and whining and bitching as I can, but at some point, even the hardest of fanboys has to ask himself or herself a question. At which point is a tank so bad that even you admit that it is bad? That is the ultimate question for you. So let's start with the armor. And we have here 120 millimeters of roll homogeneous armor for both the lower and the upper glazes with some decent angling between 53 and 66 degrees, giving it a best line of sight thickness of just under 300 millimeters. And the side armor is 80 millimeters with the upper part being angled outwards at quite a hefty angle, and uh, that is pretty trolley. And that has to do to make room for the massive turret ring. However, behind the road wheels, it is only 30 millimeters of armor and that is not really much. Rear armor is uh, 60 and 50 millimeters and the deck plating is 30 millimeters with large parts of the uh, exhaust section, I guess, being only five millimeters. So this tank can be attacked from diving planes with even heavy machine guns and they will set the engine on fire and you know make you a st stationary target then there is also the 
shot trap there is you know the driver's hatch which is easily penetratable by overmatching even 40 millimeters of cast homogeneous armor that is also quite easy to penetrate now this armor would be kind of cool at yeah let's say 6.7 but this is a 7.7 .7 tank there are now so many light tanks tank destroyers medium tanks that have auto loaders and stabilizers and have APFSDS, APDS, HEATFS, HESH or ultra high panning AP or APHE rounds that this armor means nothing. It's just thick butter, but it's still butter. The turret is uh, roughly equal with uh, 230 up to 280 millimeters of armor with an additional cast homogeneous armor um, gun mantlet around it. Everything is well rounded and heavily angled, but it doesn't mean anything. So the armor, it's meant in a good way, but it's just outdated at this point. This tank's armor would have been good, let's say, half a decade ago in War Thunder. I'm not exaggerating. Since then, a lot of things happened. Remember, this tank has the same battle rating as the Object 120. Just saying. Then, let's talk about the mobility. So, for this 50.0 ton tank, we have a 700 horsepower strong engine, giving it a 14 horsepower per ton ratio. That is not really awful for a heavy tank but at this battle rating it is bad top speed is 42 kilometers per hour which you actually can reach i think here the super soviet uh, modifiers for the track traction and friction and also their width plays together in a nice way however it's still not magic especially uphill or through mud you really feel the lack of power now while the forward speed is kind of acceptable and usable, there is one feature Soviet heavy tanks from the IS-2 onward, or IS-1 therefore, really always possessed, and that was a good reverse gear, a good reverse speed, surprisingly fast so. And this tank even lacks this, because minus 8 km per hour doesn't seem to be very awful if you compare it, for example, with uh, some of the British or the Panther tanks. Uh, of lower battle ratings but this is top tier where a lot of tanks just go more or less as fast backwards as they go forwards and minus eight kilometers per hour is just slower than for example the is6s minus 17 the t10ms minus 10 which is already not that great the is4s minus 11 the is3s minus 16 kilometers per hour just to put things into perspective so that is the mobility then i just want to add here the survivability of the tank ammunition is everywhere the crew is tightly cramped and uh three out of the four crew are in the turret and even if you magically survive by taking out lots of ammunition and you lose two crew then your reload will be awful on the 122 millimeter d25t cannon which is essentially the same gun that you get on said IS-2 at battle rating 5.7. Just saying. So, <clears throat> we have a little bit of a better reload though, with 15.0 seconds for a fully trained ace crew. And then you basically have World War II ammunition. So, we have three types of APHE and... Um, we have an actual APHE shell, the BR-471, with uh, 205 millimeters of penetration. Then we have the BR-471B APHE BC rounds, which has the same amount of uh, mass velocity, 795 meters per second, and also still 205 millimeters of penetration. But in actual battle has better angle performance but sometimes it also makes weird things and the best shell is the br 471 d apcbc round with 800 meters per second mass velocity and a whopping 230 millimeters of penetration and the fourth shell type is the of 471 high explosive shell with 37 millimeters of penetration and you have this on a 
15 second reload with a tank that doesn't have a two plane stabilizer but only a one plane stabilizer so only at lower speeds you can make it work <clears throat> there is no heat shell there is no APDS or APFSDS round like the T10, T10M has it you know a APDS and heat FS that is this is all that you got so you have World War II mobility you have World War II gun and World War II ammunition what about the gun handling oh this is where the tank really begins to suck you have minus three degrees of gun depression that is some of the worst throughout war thunder yes it's the same as with the majority of the other soviet heavy tanks Funnily enough, the T10M at bat rating 8.3 then has a whopping 4 degrees of gun depression. But 3 is, in so many situations, the tank is more or less unusable. Even the sidewalks in plain city fights sometimes give you trouble. It's that bad. And 17 degrees of gun elevation. Which doesn't sound that awful, except that the heavy machine gun on top is also bound to this maximum elevation of 17 degrees so <clears throat> you can't even use this in the majority of cases to threaten helicopters then we have only a um, turret rotation speed of lo and behold 14 degrees per second and a gun elevation speed of a world war ii standard four and a half degrees per second but let's not stop there because it gets worse that is all for only a fully trained ace crew and that versus tanks that have 20 30 35 40 degrees per second turret traverse you see that this tank really struggles so the question is obviously is this tank worth it the answer is a clear no and to be honest, playing this tank really gave me, uh, you know, a bad flashback. Because I used to love this armor meta. I used to love those slow, heavily trundling, you know, steel beasts. But now they're just XP pinata for all the light tanks. This tank just shows in a brutal way what went wrong in War Thunder. And, um,. I had quite a lot of soul pain because it uh, cut open old wounds or old scars that I believe to be healed because again it showed in a brutal way what went wrong. It, it, there is too much compression, there is too much power and feature creep throughout the years. It is a line of tanks in general, heavy tanks that has been forgotten by Gaijin. And I, I would think that the majority of people would agree that this tank is at least disappointing. I hoped for it to be a bit better in terms of battle rating. But it's just, you know, a forgotten line. Um, Gacha never bothered to, you know, give it any sort of love. And the tank is absolutely not worth it. Save yourself the pain and... Uh, <laughs> That's it for me today, so thanks for watching, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video nonetheless, and give it a like if it did. Subscribe if you want to see more, and we'll see each other on the waves, in the skies, and on the battlefields of War Thunder.